Baldwinsville Community Update. I'm your host, Shelly Hoffman. Hey, everybody. I have the pleasure of the mayor again today. How are you doing, Mr. Mayor? Pretty good. And looking out the window, it looks like it's going to be another beautiful fall day in the low 70s. But it doesn't look like it's going to stay that way. So hey, we better, hey, when hey. I get done with you, I got some work to do outdoors. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Every fall, you, you know, you have nice weather and you go, okay, I got a few more days. And all of a sudden it, it drops to 50 and there's things you want to do that you can't, you know, like I want to get the vehicles washed and maybe put a little wax on my car. And so that may be this afternoon's work because yeah. it's hard to do that when it's 50 degrees. They tell you don't use it up below a certain temperature. You know, I was going to mow the lawn yesterday and I thought I can do the I can mow the lawn when it's 50, you know, and I can rake when it's 50. But there's things that you don't want to do when it's 50. So um, never put off for today, what you can put off for later. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because I'm friends with the guys at Clearway and they plow and they do, you know, driveways and stuff during the, the nice months and then they plow in the winter. And when I was talking to Mark Casson the other day, he said that the salt was getting delivered. And I'm, you know, you know me and bad news, Mayor, you know? <laughs> hey, I have no bad news today. <laughs> and I'm aware of. But that's really eye-opening, you know, because it was a fairly nice day when he said that. But we're not really that far away from those um, plow stakes going in the ground and, you know, yep. be here before we know it. So Jeff McCullough <laughs> sent me a picture of all the uh, the salter apparatuses that go on the back of the dump trucks. So when they're plowing, they could, it spreads the salt around on the street and they're getting them all ready to go. And uh, actually, they didn't just start that. They've been doing that for a couple of weeks Uh and uh, Chuck said, you know, if you if you wait, you're going to get snow before you expect it. Or, or at this time of year, we're more likely to get a freeze, like rain. And then maybe it, the temperature drops overnight. Now you got freezing on the road. Now we got to go out and all you really need is salt. So you want to make sure those salt machines are working. December 1st is not the time to be fixing those. Uh, for the, <laughs> that goes back to don't put off today. <laughs> So the village residents should be very comfortable that our our public works group is is a step ahead, uh, getting everything ready. I know we had salt come in. Uh, you know, it just seems like we were just talking about how it was warming up and people could get outside to do things. And all of a sudden we're talking about it's getting colder and you can't be outside and do as many things. But we have a pretty good list of um, stuff on the agenda for, for our people to enjoy um, better than it was a year ago. Um, we did Halloween a year ago. Uh, we did manage to do that, and everybody was asked to be safe. And I think it, it came off pretty much without a hitch, at least around the village it did. Yeah. Uh, we, we came up with a gizmo where we had a piece of plywood with a long tube going up into the house, and I threw candy down the tube. And we're going to do something like that again this year because it went over so big. The kid, the little kids especially love holding their bag up and, look, Mommy, candy came out of that, you know. So, you know, it was fun. Why not do it again? This year, I think, will be uh, Minions instead of Mickey Mouse. Oh, cool. So we've got a Minion thing to go over the board. And uh, so, you know, we look forward. My wife's already bought six big bags of candy. Uh, we get excited. You know, we, we don't have any little ones around, but we enjoy the little ones in the neighborhood. And, and particularly, you know, they'll come to the door and you can tell the parents have said, let them see if they can guess who you are. And they, they come. Hi, I'm Joey. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, they're so excited. And, and that's nice to see. And it's mm -hmm. particularly with what we've been through and uh, to know that maybe they haven't been tarnished by the COVID stuff. Uh, but Halloween, I double checked with the police chief because that was my belief. And he confirmed it, that October 31st is always trick or treat, even if it's this year it's on a Sunday. And I know some people on Facebook were saying, why won't you do it on a Saturday if you could? Um, we do it October 31st from 6 to 8 p.m. And okay. please, if you have kids going around, if people don't have their house lights on, don't don't go to the house. I mean, that's, they're, they're telling you that maybe they're too old to come to the door a hundred times or they're just, you know, there's something going on. Maybe they're not feeling well. Just go to the houses that have lights on. Uh, and in our neighborhood, I know that's plenty. Um, we, we average, you know, hundred to 125 kids every year. Um, 
it's a lot of fun. So for those who are wondering if, if it's everything's going to be sort of normal, um, I would say, yeah, be normal, but don't go in clusters of 50 people where you're all huddled together. And, um, and then um, the word is out from Kiwanis that the turkey trot is on. They are accepting uh, applications now with the first 1,500 to get, you know, the long sleeve shirts that they give away every year. Um, but check with the Kiwanis if you have any questions. Um, I believe they're on Facebook. And that will be Thanksgiving morning. Uh, they always, it's always fun. Um, the ch I talked with the chief and he said the only thing waiting to hear was whether they had enough volunteers to man the street corners to, so traffic wouldn't come into the, uh, the route of the, of the run. Uh, but everything otherwise is, is okay. Uh, there, if, if you go on the Kiwanis site, there are some things you're going to do a little different. I don't think they're going to let you in the building without a mask on. Yeah, I like to sign up and that type of stuff if you do a late registration. But for the general run will be what it usually has been over the years. I um, I did it a couple times. And then um, lately I go out and sit at the end of the driveway and wave to old friends running by. And, and it just looking at some of the different costumes that people come up with, the, tur the turkeys they wear on their heads and, you know, the turkey outfits that people wear. And uh, everybody seems to be in such a good mood, uh, you know, on a nice holiday. And then um, the fire department and the village are both excited to say that the parade of lights yes. and the tree lighting is going to be um, as we expect it to be, um, at, at least at this time. I, I, everything comes with the, with the caveat that if suddenly there's a huge spike and we got people's sick all over the place and things can change. But, but at this point, the parade of lights, which is that the same day or that same weekend after the Turkey trot this Saturday um, in November, um, they may start a little earlier this year so that they can get people out of there earlier, you know, so it's not as late at night. I know that, that the part of the event that used to be at the library is not taking place. Okay. Um, they don't, they didn't feel it was, made a lot of sense to have people sitting on Santa Claus's lap and you know, breathing on each other, you know, because you never know who might be sick. And, and then when they would go into that. Well, mayor, we can't get Santa Claus sick. I mean, well, Santa, Santa will be at the tree lighting and, okay. wait for everybody. and I, I'm thinking that people probably can get their pictures taken with them and stuff like that. Cause that'll be, it's outdoors. It's a lot safer. Okay. So put those all on your calendar. Um, I know that they had, the word I got was that they had shut down the, the applications for trucks and stuff to be in the parade because they had so many. Nice. They had to cut it at a certain number, and, and I guess they've reached that number. So for people who have been, you know, uh, disappointed that things – looks like we're going to have a fairly normal fall Thanksgiving into Christmas type thing, I would ask people – Last year, I asked people to decorate a little extra. I would say, let's do that again. Um, I think people need to pick me up. And I know last year, I heard people say, wow, you rode around this village. Couldn't have been anywhere that was be better decorated than Baldwinsville. So you know, let's let's see if we can top last year. You know, there were some streets that had terrific decorations on houses. Um, people that I don't think had decorated much in the past you know, throw a set of lights on a little pine tree in the yard. And so as you drove down the street, there were lights all over the place. And I would, I would think that that would be a nice, maybe a nice tradition is to, to go a little overboard with the, with the decorations. Uh, it was certainly appreciated last year. I know my wife and I took a ride around the village and were just tickled to see, you know, how beautiful it was. And, uh, I'm sure it, for older people who couldn't get out, they could always go to the front window and look and see all the neighbors' lights. And uh, you, you do put a little something extra in people's lives by doing something like that. Absolutely. And and uh, you've mentioned that Ballinsville is special, and I, you know, you certainly get no argument from me. And uh, this is just another chance for us to show it. And uh, I mean, you should be excited. We've got Halloween, we've got turkey trot, we've got Christmas tree lighting, and parade of lights, things are getting back to somewhat normal, whatever that is, 
Um, uh, well, I'm, I'm going to pick on you for a second, Mayor, if I, okay. if I may. So you know how you go into Walmart and all the Halloween stuff is gone and all the Christmas stuff is there and you go into Hobby Lobby and all the Christmas stuff is there? Mm -hmm. We totally bypassed this Saturday and went straight to Christmas. Oh, I know it. <laughs> <laughs> My wife and I talk about it all the time that you're expecting to see Halloween ads for costumes and stuff and we're seeing ads for Christmas trees. You know. Absolutely. It's it's crazy. So I, I'm all for like trying to plan what uh, if I can get Bri to help me with my roof again this year. Don't don't get me wrong. I got Christmas on my brain. But <laughs> um, but we we have a pretty cool Saturday in the village. Yep. Um, I'm sure people have seen a lot of the posts and stuff about it. But you want to throw out there um, how exciting this Saturday is going to be? Well, I'm I'm excited because, first of all, the, the window painting, which has been a tradition for uh, decades. And um, it has been reinvigorated. And uh, so that's this Saturday starting at 10 o'clock. Um, I don't know. You're more involved with how do How would somebody sign up for that? So the signups were cut, technically cut off on Friday of last week, just because Kevin's now walking around assigning um, the painters their windows. If they call, I mean, he probably has a few windows that are left. Like, you know, we always pick, um, we always try and have extra just in case somebody shows up that day. But um, but I think we have over 185 painters. And I know he uh, contacted me yesterday that we have like 200 windows. The businesses, even some last minute, like Subway grabbed, um, said, hey, don't forget about us. We're here. And he was going to hit a couple other ones, too. But so, yeah, over over 185 windows will be painted uh, in, in Baldwinsville, which is awesome. Yeah. And there's going to be paint stations. So everybody that has signed up so far should have received an email or you will get an email in the next day or two telling you what paint station the lions club is going to help with that. They're going to run the paint stations and what windows you are assigned to. And then Kevin from parks and rec and myself and a few other volunteers will certainly be around the village to help. And there's a list of what need they need to bring. So if you've never done window painting before, you want to bring a bucket of water, your paint brushes, uh, cups to put the paint in, a cloth to clean things off, uh, soap so you can outline. I don't know if you've ever painted on the window yourself, but you have to outline your drawing in a soap. It helps the paint stay in the lines. Oh, gotcha. Uh, I wondered how they did that. I've not, I, I, it didn't happen until after I was too old to do it, uh, but I always would... I always thought it was really cool to drive around that morning and to see the families at different places and, you know, spooky ones, funny ones, uh, Charlie Brown window paint. You know, I mean, people came, there was a full gamut of Halloween stuff. And, uh, you know, some of them were, were, I mean, truly artistic and some were just a little kid having fun yeah. and it didn't matter. It really doesn't matter how artistic it is. It just, it's the fact that when you drive through and you look and you see orange and yellow and red and all these windows and, and realize the whole community came together to do that kind of stuff. And that that's terrific. And then they, they got to be prepared for trick or treat on the yeah. businesses right after that. I mean, uh, it's like 11 to two businesses in the village. I know I, I posted um, the businesses as of this morning that are going to have trick or treating. So, I mean, if a business isn't, partaking and you walk in, they're going to look at you kind of funny, <laughs> but um, it's, it's really kind of cool. My, our, our neighbor, it was interesting. They, he took his kids up to old forge at the campground up there. And every weekend, the people who are camping have candy and the kids can come into the campground dressed up and they won't go to all the trailers and, and the little cabins and stuff and people nice. can't. So they went up and had a little early Chris or early Halloween. I'm already getting up to Christmas. <laughs> um, so they had their own up there early and uh, then they'd be able to have one Saturday at 11 to two in the village. And then they come on October 31st from six to eight. Be a lot of dentists being very happy at all. <laughs> well, and you know, we have quite a few churches that do a trunk or treat. And I apologize for, you know, the ones that I don't know. The Methodist church, I know right there on the past the four corners, theirs is the 30th. 
starting at five, but I'm pretty sure like Word of Life, there's a lot of really great organizations, but mainly the churches, I think. And, it, and just like you said, with the businesses, it's safe. The parents are walking around. It's daylight. Yeah, uh, That's another safe way. You know, if, if maybe you live somewhere or um, Sunday night's not going to work for you. There's plenty of places that weekend to uh, to have the kids dress up and have some fun and get some candy. Yeah, so people should have a lot to look forward to. Um, and if, you, if you're not sure, typically the, the uh, trunk or treat is done by churches. I know our, uh, the Wesleyan Church has done it. I just haven't seen whether they're doing it this year. Um, so people can check, call the churches and just say, are you having it again this year? And, uh, you know, if people don't know what that is, is people back there or pull their cars in, open up their trunks. And many of them decorate that area to look like a spooky cave or something and then they've got candy and that kind of stuff so it's nice again for little kids particularly some people don't like to have their four and five year olds out in the dark and you know and the kids get scared i mean yeah. and i understand that so that there are like you said just all kinds of options and if if, if you have any questions you can always call the chamber of commerce and they they probably have a list of everybody who's doing those kind of things um Take advantage of it. Um, you know, if you don't, if your kids don't need the candy, then that's fine. But uh, this is a chance to get out uh, in the daytime and, and have some fun. And um, I, I do know the businesses and the churches try and have some peanut free options too, just to throw that out there to the, the parents because of the allergies that are there. That's and, good. Uh, and I, I'll throw in just to make people laugh in case they ever look at my car. As I don't decorate my car, I just open up the back and say it's a junkyard. <laughs> because if you ever look in the back of my car, <laughs> That, that's that's, that's like. very clever. You don't miss a trick, do you? All right, let me see what else I got here. We had a ribbon cutting the other day for the Red Mill Manor. Um, that's very nice. Um, I did. I was over at the senior center yesterday um, talking with Ruth, and then she was talking to a young lady who had, is moving in this, I think, in a week, and was quite excited. Um, I saw, I, sh I said, you're the first one I know. And she said, well, I heard a couple people have already moved in, but she said, I don't like to cook. So they're, they're, they prepare three meals a day. You know, you don't, you go down to like a, a not a cafeteria, but a, I mean, if you've been in the red mill, it was very nice. And now it's even nicer. Um, and they've really fixed it up. So they have, a, would be a very upper class dining hall. So you, I, I don't know how it works, but I'm assuming there's a menu uh, maybe for breakfast, you can order eggs and maybe they have pancakes and, you know, you can just get a bowl of cereal, that type of thing. So then you don't have to go and buy a lot of groceries because somebody else buys the groceries for you. And she was thrilled because she said they have a taxi service so that anywhere you need to go, like a doctor's appointment or if I want to come to Canton Woods, I just sign up and they'll bring me over here and come pick me up when I'm done. So she said, that's terrific. You know, that's and I know people are are on Facebook have had a field day with how much the cost is. And this is not your senior who's retired and living on a, on Social Security place to live. This is somebody who who worked and has got a pretty nice savings and but doesn't does not want to have to take care of a house, even an apartment. If you don't cook. It means you're going out for a lot of meals. Now you're in a place where your rent is going to include those meals. It includes a lot of other stuff. Um, I'm not saying that it's price-wise, that it's easy on the pocketbook, but for there are people who can afford that. Um, this is not a, uh, a care facility of any sort. They're not, they're not coming in and giving your medicine and, and bathing you and stuff. This is people who can live on their own uh, I mean, like me, my wife is the cook. I, I, she's taught me how to make eggs. You know, I can put TV dinners and, you know, that kind of stuff. And some people are like, you know, just don't cook. And so, I mean, I, not that I necessarily could afford that place, but it, if I could, it would be perfect. And you can walk everywhere in the village. I mean, you know, you want to go to... Uh, Tops or not tops to kinnies, you know, to pick up a prescription, that type of thing. You know, if you if you there's beauty parlors in walking distance of the, that business. Uh, 
you know, the barbers yourself. right across the street too. You go right across the street and Tony's over there, cut your hair. Uh, no, I, I, I have yet to be inside of it. I've, I've missed every opportunity so far, but I just know that Lauren Russett, for those of you that know Lauren, she's the chamber director and she owns Russet PR is very upset that at 22, <laughs> she is she, not old enough. <laughs> she was at the ribbon cutting and she said, well, I wish there wasn't an age restriction because I'd be here in a heartbeat. <laughs> And I don't know. Said, what the name of the list now, honey. <laughs> it was very nice. Uh, the ribbon cutting. The uh, county executive was there, and uh, the group that is doing it, uh, led by Paul Capicelli, and it, that's a familiar name for people as far as builders. I think yeah. Capicelli's might have built uh, Village Green, a lot of that area. It said yes. And uh, also Kurt Strollman, who was a very good athlete in this area, who's involved with the. Uh, company that runs uh, the Red Mill Manor. So if, it, if it's if it's something you're thinking about, uh, it's she, this woman said, I'm going to have to get rid of a lot of stuff because I'm in an apartment at Timberbanks. But, and it's basically these things are like an efficiency apartment. You have a sleeping area, then there's an area where you can have your television. Uh, but it's all like basically a room, room and a half type of thing. And uh, I think everybody's going to have a microwave and a small, like a dorm type refrigerator. So you can, you know, you can have your a Pepsi there. So at night, if you want something cold, uh, but it's nice set up and, and they're very willing to give people a tour if they are interested. Um, it's, it's there, take advantage of it. Uh, you know, it's another opportunity. And what it does is we have, we have housing for people who need assistance. We have people who, maybe need um, a little medical attention. And we have property for, you know, people who are very independent and financially capable. It's not bad to have a cross section. Uh, people were concerned about what are they gonna say when the, when the concerts start? They're well prepared that they, they've listened, said that when they were there in looking to invest in the property, that there was a concert going on and they could not hear the music in the building. So. For all the people who are concerned that, that they're going to raise a fuss and shut down the concerts, which we hope pick up this coming summer with the COVID uh, sort of in the back, in the rearview mirror, um, that that won't be an issue. So and it, interesting, while we were there, um, Dave Knapp, who's a county uh, legislator, was there. And uh, I had just asked him where we stood on the main street. Uh, grants because I, you know, it was supposed to be end of September, beginning of October that we would hear. And he said, and the county executive uh, confirmed it a little while later, they originally had a nut of $5 million that everybody was applying for a share of that. And because, according to the county executive, the proposals were so um, outstanding, they added $2.5 million to that kitty. Wow. So it's now up to $7.5 million which kind of made it sound like pretty much everybody who put in a reasonable application was going to get what they asked for, which, uh, you know, we put in for the full 500,000 for 22 uh, separate businesses. And, uh, you know, the county executive sort of acknowledged you know, Baldwinsville and, and, and what a great place it is to invest in that Lysander and Van Buren had the greatest growth among towns in Onondaga County recently and that the, the Baldwinsville community, um, in his mind, w w was outstanding and a great place to invest. And I, so I thanked him. I thanked the people from the Red Mill for, for thinking that we we're a good investment, that uh, they want to spend their money here. Uh, I'm sure that real estate people like you and, and pe you know, Lauren, who's in, in the chamber, and they love to hear that outside people think Baldwinsville is a great place to invest money. So. Yes. That, that sounds like good news for us. Um, hopefully we'll hear something very soon. Um, Try and think if there's anything else. I want to point out with, you know, the village meetings have gone back to being Zoom. And somebody said, well, what if you want to watch the meeting? And you, you, some people used to drop in, but hard, I mean, we really did not get a lot of people come in to our meetings. But we do them live on Facebook on the Village of Baldwinsville site. So that if you're sitting at home, if if you're able to, if you're if you have Facebook, um, which is easy to get.
if you know somebody that wants to watch the village meetings and you can help them sign up on their computer for Facebook and they can go to the village site, we're on live. Um, and if they want to participate, we will give them the Zoom links. And um, the last meeting was somebody from uh, a county agency that's looking to add a walking trail at Canton Woods, a small trail around the property so that people are there on a nice day. They can come over, maybe play cards for a couple hours, go out, take a walk, come in, have lunch, play cards again in the afternoon. But the walk would be also a couple of signs would encourage stretching, encourage good eating habits. So as they're walking, they'd see some of these things. So for people who don't want to go out and walk the bigger trails, unfamiliar with where they're going and that type of stuff, now you're going to be on the property of the senior center. And uh, this is all, I think, I think there may be some federal funding for this. Um, but she joined us at the meeting, just like she would have at College Hall. And she got to say what she wanted to say. If, if somebody wants to join our meeting and they can't, they can't watch it on Facebook, we can send them the link and they can just sit and watch us and like they're in the meeting room. I mean, and your meetings are on Pack B after the fact too, aren't and they? They're on Pack B within a day. Uh, and I know some people will make the comment, well, I like to see it live. And right. uh, the uh, governor was on the other day. I happened to catch a minute or two of something uh, she was saying about, you need to let the public know what you're going to be talking about at the meetings. Your agendas need to be available. We post our agendas by the close of business on Wednesday so that today at four o'clock, if you go on the village website, the agenda is posted. Uh, and that, then if you see something that you, you know, we're going to build a, uh, a castle in the middle of the four corners and you don't quite get it. You're more than welcome to come in and ask us if we've gone nuts. <laughs> we might agree that we have. Who knows? Um, so um, I just wanted people to know that they they uh, have access to our meetings. Uh, and again, as you say, they're on Facebook. They're on their uh, Pack B shows them. I don't know six or seven times. Usually, usually the weekend after the meeting is the first time, and then they. Every couple of days, they run through the cycle and the town of Lysander, town of Van Buren meetings. Uh, so uh, people can make themselves be a part of the meeting process. Um, Mo Butler, our village clerk, wanted to remind people that October 31st is your last day to pay village taxes before they get turned over to the county. Uh, so if you've been late uh, with for whatever reason, um, obviously there is a penalty. But it's easier if you if you pay us than have to go with the county now sending you a letter demanding the money. Uh, they make us whole, which is nice. And uh, so, if you have you're a little behind on getting your taxes in, this is a, a good week to get it done. Uh, between now and uh, October 31st is is Halloween, obviously. But I would. I'm going to say that if somebody came in Monday morning, November 1st, opened up the drop box, they would assume that anything was in there had come the night, the day before. Uh, don't hold me to that, but I'm just, I'm guessing that that's the way that works. Call Village, Village Hall if you have a question. Okay. Um, things going on at Canton Woods. Um, when I was over yesterday, um, they're helping sell the calendars that my wife produces. And uh, they've been going very good. They still have a few. Go to call Canton Woods or drop by, and you can pick up a calendar. If you don't know what I'm talking about, their Village of Baldwinsville calendars, 12 months of pictures from around the village taken by local village people. Um, and the money, all the, all the profit goes to Canton Woods for them to use uh, on their programs, however they need to use them. Uh, they also have another fundraiser. Christmas wreaths that you can pick up. They're done by a Baldwinsville florist. They have red or burgundy bows. Call the senior center at 638-4536 if you're interested in ordering one. Um, I don't have the price. I don't think they're extremely pricey. Um, and you can find out how much they do cost, how big they are, when they come in, that type of thing. 
Uh, and that's another fundraiser for Canton Woods. So if you, you know, you're you looking for a wreath for your front door or over your fireplace, a good place to start is Canton Woods. And you know that it's being done by a local florist, so it should be nice. And we've got a couple local florists that are very good. Um, big thing right now with them, you know, the, the big headline came out like a week ago, uh, energy gas or heating gas costs could be up 30% this winter. Yeah. Some of us, you know, that's not, I mean, it's not fun, but it, it's, it doesn't hurt us like it hurts some people, you know, on fixed incomes. Um, so they've been very busy filing heap um, claims. That's the Home Energy Assistance Program. Um, it's federally funded. Uh, Nancy Sullivan is waiting for you to call and she will tell you whether you're, you qualify and then she'll get you some help paying for your heating costs. Um, somebody was I was talking to said that they are just now finishing up, using up the money that they got from last year. Um, yes. So it, it must be a significant amount, but the call, don't sit around this winter and start having your heat on at 54 degrees because you can't afford the prices. Get a hold of Nancy and, and at 638-4536. And uh, she'll go through it with you. Um, holiday stuff for seniors. Meals. The Rescue Mission does Thanksgiving and Christmas meals um, home delivered. So if, if you're somebody who doesn't have a family locally and you would like a Thanksgiving dinner delivered or a Christmas dinner delivered, the reservation deadline for Thanksgiving is November 5th. So it looks like about two weeks out. And then for the Christmas dinner, it's December 6th. You have to be home when they bring the meals. Uh, you can't be away visiting your kids or something. You have to be there. Uh, but if you want to know about it, call Chris or Kenton Woods at 638-4536, and they'll have the info as far as uh, whether, you, whether you qualify or um, they can explain to you what's in the meal, that type of stuff. Uh, but to me, it would seem like a – a no-brainer to give them a call and get signed up. Uh, and if you're going to get a meal from someplace else, that's fine because you can use two meals, two different days, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day type thing. You didn't get involved. Flu shot on the 22nd of October. That's this Friday. So um, just sign up. Uh, make sure you bring your in insurance information and you have to wear a mask and bring your proof of insure of uh, vaccine. Uh, it's an indoor clinic. And then for Halloween, on the next a week from Friday on the 29th, stop over and they have a little treat for all the seniors, courtesy of the activity committee. And uh, it's usually pretty nice. They did that. They've done that for other like I think Valentine's Day. They had a drive up and you got some candy and yeah, pretty nice. So it's nice for the seniors, nice things for the kids. This is a nice stretch. Those are the people that we need to take care of, the young people, the older people, and hopefully us in the middle. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'll be 75 in January. I keep forgetting I'm one of the older ones. Um, when you don't need help, it's nice to be able to help other people. And so our community is great at that. I'm sure the volunteer center stuff will be, as far as the Christmas Bureau will be popping up pretty soon. Yeah, That's they were talking about it the other day. So yep. we, and we have the other groups, you know, the Baldwinsville helping Baldwinsville. Um, most of the churches um, are, if, if you know a family that's in need, there should be no reason you can't find somebody that would help them. Um, it's a good time, but don't wait till, December 20th to say, oh, my neighbors are hurting for Christmas. Even though I think somebody would come through even at that late date, give it, give people a chance to have some time to put some packages together, whether it's food, whether it's gifts for kids. Uh, I'm getting all excited because I think it's a great, it sounds like a great time. I hope people stay cautious um, with this Delta variant, uh, a lot of people getting sick. Um, just, you know, don't, don't go crazy with 75 people in your dining room, you know, all breathing on each other. 
Did you um did you happen to catch the interview that I did with the uh, Greater Baldwinsville Ambulance Corp, the new um, no, I did not. Operation, Chris. I he will. said that they are getting about one to two calls a day, not every day, but on average, about one to two calls for um, COVID positive patients in in the area they serve. So again, you have Lakeland, you know, not just Baldwinsville, Lysander, Van Buren. You have Plainville. You have. He told me they go all the way to Lakeland, almost to um, the yep. state fairgrounds. But um, but that's still a lot, and those are just the people that are calling nine one one for assistance. So it's definitely here it's in our schools you know being that i have school age kids i hear about that uh, a lot and of times we're going day to day not thinking about it but it's definitely still around it's something that people need to be cautious about keep hearing people who, who got quite sick i mean fortunately not as many people are dying um it's a little slower pace but i'll tell you what ryan mcmahon has said it before well, if one person dies it's too many you know so be a little careful you know uh some people, it's hard to not be around their families and stuff. Uh, you do what you got to do, um, but it'd be pretty tough to be putting that obituary in the paper because you maybe did something crazy and somebody around you got sick. And I don't like to get into the, the morbid sounding stuff, but, but as you say, it, it, it's around. It's and around. So we have a lot of great things happening. Obviously, you know, they're trick or treating and different things. So I'm, I'm one always out in the community. I mean, I don't want to say that I'm not everybody. Pretty much, you follow me on Facebook, you know everything that I'm doing. But um, I just, it's not that we're not aware of it. It's not that we don't know that it's out there. And, and I think every once in a while we need to be reminded of it as well. Because if it hasn't affected you directly lately, it's easy to kind of think things are completely back to normal. Right. Right. And, and, and I think if you look far enough, you'll find people close to you that you didn't even know might, maybe were sick. Not everybody goes on Facebook and says, hey, I got COVID. You know, I mean, no. we, we just keep running into people and, and people who thought it was a lot less than it was and said I was sick for two weeks and never been that sick in my life. And I've had the flu and it was not like that. So if you if you can get a shot and you haven't gotten it yet, you probably ought to. Um, you know, it's that's obviously a uh, touchy subject around the country, and uh, you're not going to get involved with that right here because we're we're trying to, we try to uh, take people's minds off of some of that stuff. But uh, just just look forward to the good things we have. Um, think about Christmas, and if you haven't thought that you have a tree in your yard that would make a great Christmas tree for village, the uh, Baldwin's Canal Square setup, please, uh, you can contact me or contact Chuck McAuliffe at the DPW. Um, we're looking for a nice tree. It's got to be big, not too big. Um, we'll come and cut it. We take care of getting rid of the stump and, you know, grinding it up. And so, you, you know, you, it'll be like a professional tree company came in and did it. Um, so let us know. Um, and again, it's always a pride thing to be able to drive by and point. That's our tree. I'm going to plant a tree. I don't know where yet because I move a lot, but I'm going to find a piece of property and plant a tree. So one day my tree can be the Christmas tree. There you go. <laughs> and then you can drive by and when somebody else is living there and say, that's the tree you can have. <laughs> I'll, I'll, make it, I'll make a contingency in the cell of the house. That tree has to be the Christmas tree one year. You, you are a corker. And, it, and I, I don't know if I mentioned, but but this past weekend was the Volunteer Center uh, Man and Woman of the Year, and they did, took care of two years' worth. There's nothing that makes our community go better than the volunteers. Uh, right. we, the village can do stuff. The towns can do stuff. The schools can do stuff. There's always things that get missed. There's always people that just don't fall into categories. And our volunteer centers, our center, um, you know, Barb Presley and all the people there just do such a great job. And uh, so hats off to the people who win the awards, knowing that there are, as they would acknowledge, so many more people who do the same things that just don't get recognized. Um, we're blessed that we have a great community. Absolutely. And that is a good note to end this one, unless you have anything else to add. But well, not, nothing bad, right? Nothing. <laughs> There you go. Am I your hero? <laughs> you are today. Well, okay. you, almost, you almost started talking about that four-letter word. I mean, I brought up salt, which has four letters. Oh, yeah. I didn't want to say the other thing. Too much. <laughs> and uh, just don't forget, lock your car doors. Absolutely. That's, That's for you. <laughs>
Thanks, Mayor. I will talk to you soon. Okay, Bye. Cheryl.